Greetings, Minecrafters, and welcome to another Minecraft discussion on this glorious April day in Northern Vermont. Uh, my name is Kimberly Coyne, and this is little Giovanni, and we are your host and hostess with the most and mostest. Right here behind me is a little bit of an illusion, because I think Vermont is a three-season state, unless you want to count mud season. But right there behind me, it would look like, well, that is the grass, and then, whoa, there we go, there's the rest. This is the first day... Actually, I don't have snowshoes on, though actually I'm going to bring them um, for tomorrow morning because I meant to. I actually took them out of the Jeep because I had to fill up the propane for this grill. I was getting all excited for that, you know, first burger outside. Then I've got to put them back in. So here we are. But it's uh, it's still very much winter. There's a beaver pond. Anyway, all right. <clears throat> and the rumor on the street is that the bears are waking up. But I don't know about today because it's still pretty cold. Anyway, so Minecraft is about being the boss of your brain, becoming the boss of your brain, which means thoughts first, feelings second, actions and behavior last. And here's the thing is you gotta believe it if you're gonna change. Today's discussion is, did your brain grow today? Did your brain grow today? And this is a very good question. And so the, the mind is really the brain in action, right? The mind is the brain in action, putting it to work, to, to, to rewire neurologically. And, and those of you who listen, sort of consistently or frequently or, or, or whatever, uh, know that I have a little pet peeve when people say, you know, uh, blah, 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 nuggets, all the good stuff, you know, good stuff, good takeaways. But when they say based on neuroscience, like don't say that unless you can back it up. I'm just saying, I think people use that to hook people, um, but that's not really right. So the difference is I have my doctorate in cognitive psych. I'm not saying I know it all for damn sure, no. I'm just saying I do love neurons. I love to talk about neurons all day long. Can I not have one bored second talking about neurons? Um, and we know for a fact that neurons that wire together fire together, and that is true. So there isn't going to be brain growth if we don't give it a workout. I mean, not different than the gym, you know, like the heavy-duty barbells. Like as they say, no pain, no gain. So when we get caught up in, um, you know, sort of having our, our personal growth dependent on our environment that right there is the is is the problem because it's kind of like you got it's not like all the quantum physics touchy-feely stuff i mean there is some of that but, you, but really neurologically speaking you've really got to believe it you've got to believe that we are walking balls of energy it's all about the neurons there are we're walking you know electrons are just flying around all over the place when we're walking around and it's just like when we are out in the world and somebody says oh she was just putting it out there. That's energy. Like we, we, we talk like that. Oh, or don't, or don't put it out there. You got to stop putting that out there. You're attracting jerks into your life or whatever. That's an energy thing. It's it, like we are actually exuding that energy. And so here's the deal is in order to, in order to, to, to make a, a, a change, you know, for a, for a brilliant future, we've got to actually be able to to visualize and bo and actually sort of get these fit. She's working on pulling that out of the snow. Good luck with that. Maybe I'll do it. It's kind of funny. Um, we've actually got to get a visual for what this looks like. And even more important than that, we've got to actually feel past what the environment, all that we're taking in, sen in, a, in a sensory manner. Right now, I'm taking in this beautiful vision, just this gorge gorgeous visual of, of the beaver pond and the snow and golden the golden retriever with a stick and and then what we can hear and smell there's all kinds of earthy smells our oldest daughter used to talk about that in april it's all kinds of really earthy smells i probably can't really put a label on that's all happening right now and then past that is past all the physical that we can actually you know you know that's where that's where the change really happens and stay with me here because it's kind of like this we wake up and Hit the snow. Well, I don't hit. I don't do the snooze button. You know, I have a thing with that. I like to get up early because I feel like the whole day gets by me if I don't. But let's just say that someone else is hitting the snooze button, or maybe just hitting the alarm. Same finger, right? Uh, Joe Dispenza talks about that. Same finger to get off the same side of the bed. You put on the same comfy slippers. I know that's true for me. I have very comfortable slippers. And then you probably head to the bathroom to do your stuff there. The same, you know, kind of thing every day. And then you head to the uh, shower, probably, get, I would guess maybe get your coffee first, that depends, coffee or tea, head to the shower, wash all the parts in the same routine, 
Same, same, same. Uh, get out of there. Check the phone if you didn't do that the second you got out of bed, which is not very healthy, but I'm not judging. I'm just saying it's a sort of a fact. Um, and check the phone. Get all connected to everything. Check the computer. Check your emails. And then we, and then we have that, all, all these, bo all that box checking is reinforcing the routine. And that's not necessarily bad. Some root, some routine is good because the brain likes the, the patterns. Where it gets not so good is when it continues to go throughout our day and we're just doing the same, same, same old thing. All right. So we have the, the snooze button or the alarm, the getting out of the same side of the bed, the slippers, coffee, tea, the bathroom, the shower, checking the emails. And that, and, and that hooks us into all the knowns. And now we're feeling connected. We just checked everything. And now our mind is spinning with everything we got to do all day. Bah, 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 bah. And then here's the thing. This is where it's super important before you leave the house even if it takes five minutes and or 10 minutes or 15 minutes to actually get quiet. 15, 15 is my mark. You know, some people do like really long kind of mindfulness meditation things, but in order to really, and okay, here's the thing. The actual um, visualizing and feeling is so super important. I take it from there into the Jeep with me. So I'll get to that in a second. So to actually, let's just say it's that you're, you're starting out. So let's just say five minutes. You can put on some music as long as there are no words. We talked about that. If there are words, you're not going to get anything close to anything done probably because the brain doesn't can't shut that off if it's hearing words it's going to start associating and going someplace else so the energy is not going where we need it to go so let's say acoustical meditation music or just plain quiet no technology on at all other than that and then to really to close your eyes to stop the more stimuli from coming in and really really sit with the feeling of of how you want your day to turn out and then if it's a bigger thing than that, let's say you got an issue. You got an issue going on with you're sick of your job and you really you've got a lot of creative stuff kind of pulling you from the inside out. You want to write that children's book or you want to start that business or whatever. This is just an example. Maybe it's a relationship or something else. But to really sit there and it not just to visualize it, not attached to an outcome. That's a thing too. You wanna to, you don't want to picture that, you know, perfect knight in shining armor who doesn't Nobody exists that's perfect, right? And if, even if they did, that would be horribly annoying, right? So not that. We don't, we don't want to be attached to the outcome. We want to be attached to that loving relationship coming in. We want to be attached to that um, entrepreneurial freedom, the feeling of that, the feeling of creative freedom to self-express and do your thing and feel how good that feels or, or, or feel how that new shift of being a director, whatever it is, and actually feel it, not the outcome, but what it feels like to actually land in this new place with things being so much better for you. Because things are always, always moving forward. They're always going to get better for you. That's just how it works. The universe is listening to everything. Which the thing is, if people really believe this, because I think they just think it's just all talk. And neurologically speaking, it isn't. Neurologically speaking, it isn't. We talked about the very Darwinian... Um, Con it's not just a concept, it's real, of neural pruning. We talked about that. If you don't use it, you lose it. We've all heard that, right? Well, in the brain, that means whatever whatever we are no longer using is getting trimmed, just like the dead stuff off the bushes in April, which it is now, so it's a very good example, because we trim all the, the dead crap off so that you know all the new growth, all the new buds can happen. Well, the brain does that too. So when we cease to, to, to drag and to pull up these old memories that are no longer working for us, I mean, they are in the sense that they're reinforcing themselves, but it's not healthy. It's not going anywhere. Um, when, we, when we start to really fact check that and say, no, I, like, I'm done with that, shift out of it, event, uh, gradually, just like we trim the crap off the bushes in April, the brain trims what it doesn't use, right? So it's just like, um, even like now with things are uh, kids are mostly keyboarding. They're not writing as much. I'm not saying not at all, but not as much. Eventually, the part of the brain that that... that you know, does handwriting will not work anymore. You know, whether that's good, bad, sad, I don't know. <laughs> I think it's a little sad right now, but if we fast forward to the future, who knows? Maybe we don't know yet. Uh, it's, but this, but I do know what's good is while we're while we're not while we're not reinforcing these memories and residing in the default network of all the the old stuff in the vault of feeling, you know, shameful, all the not enough feelings, all the guilt, all the whatever your whatever your agenda is, you know, your your unconscious. Uh, messages are going on when we really start to trim those they no, no longer the brain says oh, i guess we're not going down the shame road anymore snip and there it goes it's gone and it's really true but unless people believe, honestly really believe in that in that whole in the neuroscience of it 
nothing going to change for you. Nothing going to change for your life. It's just true. And then the other thing, I was just reading an article not that long ago, and I actually put it in the Mindful Times newsletter for Champlain. I think it was like last year. It was some new research on how we actually can change our personality. And people just always thought that, oh, you got, you know, you, that's the poker hand. And some, some parts, some parts of us are, are poker hand, right? Um, certain genetics, like your height, you know, and I don't know, you know, brown eyes or, yeah, there's all kinds of genetic stuff. And to some degree, we are predisposed to certain things mental health wise, intelligence wise. And here's the thing, we can also enhance, we can enhance this stuff. So no matter what cards you're dealt, if you want to become more intelligent, guess what? You can, you absolutely can. And we can also change our personalities. If we're kind of stubborn by nature, we're this by nature, we're that by nature, to a degree we can, absolutely. So this article is all about that. So with what we're talking about as far as did your brain grow today, no pain, no gain, just like the gym. And we can push ourselves out of some of those personality traits that maybe we don't really care for, and aren't working for us anymore. Now, I want to be super clear that we are, we are not, liking and loving are different, right? We always love ourselves with the imperfections and everything. We love ourselves. We accept ourselves as is. We're not saying that. That said, we can be loving and accepting and consciously choosing with kindness to say, you know what, I just want to work on that. You know, maybe I don't like, I have a little bit of a habit of interrupting. I, I just want to work on that and set the bar and do our best, not perfect. That's self-abuse of the highest order as Anne Schlaf, Schaaf, Schaaf, Anne Schaaf, I think it is, would say. Self-abuse, perfection is self-abuse of the highest order. So we can work on stuff. We are all works in progress. And then to appreciate and be grateful for all the breadcrumbs, all the things, all the snippets on the way to where we are trying to land. Be grateful for all of it along the way, because here's the thing. We are never done. Not going to happen. I, I don't use that word never very often. We are never done. We are constantly works in progress. It's not like it's just the end and we cross the finish line because we're non, you know, we are, we are spiritual beings having a human experience, not the other way around. We are not human being. We are not human beings having a spiritual experience, we are spiritual beings having a human experience. So these balls of energy are just going to keep going even when uh, we're not on this earth anymore. I mean, it's just how it is. Kind of an appropriate conversation for Easter weekend. I didn't even plan that. And regardless of what religion or spirituality you are, I'm just saying it fits here too. So um, so that's really it. Did your brain grow today? Don't you? What we don't want to do is have our growth, our personal yeah, you know, growth, be attached to our environment. We got to really go within to make these changes. And all the great thinkers I listen to anyway, all the biggies, I mean, like the really biggies, name any of them, um, are all saying the same thing. We win from within. It's not attached to all of this. It's not attached to the same old people saying the same old things at the same job, doing the da 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 right? We have to push forward to envision past what we're looking at to make it happen. And that is just a simple fact. 95% of what we, you know, think, feel, and do is the same. It's all come from the vault. And that isn't going to change unless we um, make a very active, engaged, deliberate effort. So there we go. This is Kimberly Quinn and little Giovanni signing off from the beautiful notch in northern Vermont. Have a mindful day.